to say Ruth Fahey is with us to talk to us about her new job as the CEO of uh, Galway WFC. Ruth, good morning to you. How are you? I'm good, thank you guys. How are you? So this news um, broke last week, officially made public, but it's obviously been in gestation for quite the while. So from your perspective, it must be incredibly exciting and at the same time, you know, kind of nerve wracking because you are absolutely a pioneer when it comes to this. Yeah, I think you've just nailed it right there. It's hugely exciting. Like you say, it's kind of been in the pipeline now since um, probably the last two months around June time when I got a call from the board to see if it was something I'd be interested in. And I think the words you use there are literally explain how I reacted. Obviously, you jump you jump at it and you see the potential, but you're also uh, I'm probably wary and a little bit, um, yeah, a little bit nervous, I suppose, because the fact is this is completely new. Um, this is a pioneering breakthrough in the development of, of our league and of women's football in Ireland. So what that means is we have a whole load of uncertainty ahead. And obviously that could be difficult if you're not okay with dealing with that, but I think I'm okay with that. Um, I've got plans in place. I know what we need to do. I've been around the league since the very start, you know, since 2011. Um, I've obviously been in women's football my entire life as well. So yes, nervous, excited, um, but definitely feel like it's absolutely the right way to go. So what does success look like? Success, first of all, I'll give you a very simple one. It's for us, it's winning. It's winning silverware and, and doing something that our club hasn't done over the past eight years. You know, Galway Women's FC was formed in 2013. We're fast approaching the 10 year mark. And the fact is that we we haven't really pushed on um, in terms of results, performances, really. we've had up and down seasons over the years and we've seen some teams fade away in the meantime. We've seen other teams push on and other teams outside of Dublin. I, I will always um, use the example of Wexford Youths who've done fabulous things. Um, it's a, things are a little bit different when you're outside the capital and they've seen they've navigated that very well and very successfully. Um, we haven't quite managed to do that and obviously we have many, many plans and many different facets of where success will lie for us. but. Football will be will be won, um, and obviously, in order to achieve what we want to do in football and create that high performance environment that we haven't quite been able to do so far, we we need to find success in all the other areas. That includes commercial. You know, we we know what faces us there, but we've we've got avenues we haven't explored yet. It includes governance, it includes communications, it includes stakeholder management, and of course, it massively includes our community and our supporter base that we haven't really had. I suppose the time, resources, or the energy to to, to put into that. Um, a lot of the last couple of years has just been about I suppose week to week and month to month, and it's very difficult to plan ahead when you're so busy um, just working on the day to day operations. So what's happening now is the club have had tremendous vision and foresight and brought me in to do all those things. Um, it's going to be a, a very busy time, but it's going to be very interesting for sure. In terms of that commercial side of things, because if, if if you can crack that, then that's going to give you the finance to build the high performance mm. environment. And like it's definitely there's, in sport, it always feels like it's chicken and egg. If you get the high performance environment, commercial interests are going to be more interested. You know, success brings people along and the fans are at the middle of that. So it's kind of a holy trinity and all three need to develop and evolve together. That bit's difficult to prioritize. Like mm. do, if you get the high performance stuff, then it makes the commercial stuff easier. But if you get the commercial stuff, then you can pay for the high performance stuff. So how do you how do you balance that and how do you prioritize? Yeah, that's a great question. And I think it's something we've thought about. I think you I think you do have to choose um which you're gonna prioritize first, because if you put half your effort into each, you're not gonna get the most out of what you're trying to do. So I think what's been happening in women's football, we a lot of discussion has been there has been a lot of talk lately about, you know, can we can we go semi pro? Can we somehow professionalize the game in some sort? But it's very dangerous to even speak about things like that if you don't have your internal structures really solid, like really really solid. Because it, once you go that route, you cannot go back because to go back would be an absolute disaster. So we have to make sure that literally our our, our club structure is solid, really rigid. Um, so I believe, and just, you know, from talking to people who've been around the game an awful long time and even internationally where things have been done really well, I think you need to fix the internal and make that really solid first before you focus on the external. Um, so by doing, when I say internal, I mean commercial has to be obviously a huge, huge priority for us because every every bit of success that we get out of that facet 
will filter right into all the other factors of the game. Um, now, of course, we already have a great club. We already have a relatively good, high-performance elite environment in the club. Um, the space to push on in, in lots of ways, but we can continue to drive that. That's about attitude. That's about um, having the right people there. And we've been very fortunate this year. We've actually just literally out of um, things like COVID and just logistics that players have come back to our club. And I can't emphasize how massive the difference has been. We've had senior players coming back in over the last couple of months. We've had Julianne Russell, you know, an established senior international. We've had Maeve de Berke, equally established senior international. We've got Becky Walsh, um, underage, under 19 captain, a brilliant leader. She's come back in. She's been playing Gaelic. She's come back to the good side, thankfully. And um, we've had Emma Starr, who was a phenomenal American midfielder, who's come back to Galway for the summer purely out of love for the city as opposed to any actual plan. So it's just been really fortuitous for us. Um, but just seeing the difference those players make on the pitch, in training, in games, in everything, and just the attitude and the drive that they have, uh, that's just one example that was just lucky. But if we had the commercial background to actually, I mean, multiply bringing in people like that, um, I think we'll see massive success on the pitch, I hope. Are, are there any other teams, any other companies that you've been looking at, Ruth, over the last little while that might provide you with a blueprint for success? Yeah, absolutely. And I think one team that everybody involved in women's football would talk about would be the likes of Glasgow FC, who have done something a little bit different abroad. Um, they probably started out similar enough to where women's national league sides would have started out. They put in term they put in plan a long a long term plan. Um, they employed a full time CEO, you know, and they've done incredible things over the last number of years. And I think their success is very clearly reflected in how well they've done in Europe. They've gotten to the quarterfinals. The gap then to the next to the next level is quite large, but they've gotten there. And I mean that's absolutely massive because as we see, we can have great teams in women's national league. And I think the biggest test, and I've always said this is when you do make that big next step up and we we've seen it every year, you know, since um since P Mount, I think it was PSG all those years ago, uh gave them a relatively good game. Every time we've progressed to Europe, we just haven't been able to close that gap. And I feel like that gap it's dangerously getting a little bit bigger and bigger. So I think looking at a team like Glasgow, what they've done, how they've solidified their internal structures, can we can we emulate that? That's just one team. There's many other teams around Europe. Um, and in terms of commercial partners, there's so many, you know, like I literally haven't even started the role yet. I'm start, actually starting on Wednesday. So at the moment it's, it's just, yeah, it's, it's been all a go and um, the official start date is Wednesday. So from there, we'll be able to get out there and get talking to people. Um, because so far any sort of relationships we've tried to strike up commercially has all been, I suppose, quite informal because that's the nature. We have an amateur unincorporated association. So all those sponsorships are kind of year to year. Um, you know, they would, as you would in sporting history, it's about like a chat over coffee or things like that. I mean, everything has to completely evolve now. Um, we have a lot of people, a lot of people I know that I'd like to approach um, and that will happen over the next couple of months. So like I said, it's going to be very, very busy. The, uh, the, the fact that this is going to be the first one in Ireland where you're taking this route and it, there is a, a, a template and a map that gives you first mover advantage in some way. So obviously, you know, there's there is pressure on, on everybody involved to make it succeed. But it also is the type of thing that you would hope is going to get local support and national support too. And I suspect from the interest in the announcement that you, you probably feel that too. I do. I really do feel that. Um, I've been blown away, actually, to be honest, over the last couple of days since it was announced on Wednesday. I knew it was a big moment and I knew people would look at it and a new attention would come our way, but I didn't really anticipate um, the overwhelmingly positive support because there's always, there. Are, I mean, in reality, there are a lot of challenges and there are a lot of pitfalls that we're going to face, but everything I've had so far has been positive. Um, people want to see this work. People would love to see this become a success. And that gives me great confidence as well. Um, I'm not naive and I'm not stupid. I, I know like I said, pitfalls and challenges are two key words, but I'm not on my own in this. That's the thing. I've had a huge amount of people come to me. and um, It's actually made me realize, you know, how many people I've come to know over the last number of years, um, both in kind of the business world and also in football. And 
I've just felt yeah completely supported so any nerves I would have had have dissipated slightly thanks to that um I've had great support so far from the FAI as well I've had to say they've reached out and offered their support this is something that they like see, to see happening uh, it's, it's obviously in line with their strategy and their strategic goals as well so knowing that the governing body has my back is quite comforting um and obviously there's a lot of leadership um I suppose guidance I can take from that side as well so yeah the support is there um people want to see it work and that's going to help us I hope the um the women's league in England is going to be televised we're going to see that start to come through on, on Sky and, and highlights on BBC and that kind of stuff which is obviously it means that there'll be more women's sport on TV you know on a fundamental basic level that's great but it's also competitors league so it's a bit of a double edged sword I presume for women's football in Ireland great that the kids are watching and they're seeing and that whole uh, role model part of it but it is also and Leicester City are going to start playing uh, their games in the main Leicester City Stadium it is also then potentially what the kids are watching and aspiring to be yes and that is a fact and that is reality and something we have to deal with and I spoke about this a number of years ago. Um, as soon as the UK started to really, I suppose, get their act together, um, they've really done incre incredible things over the last couple of years. Players started to go. Players started to leave a couple of years ago. Um, and I, we obviously all noticed that. Our league was still very much in the beginning of it, of it yeah, in its infancy, to be fair. Um, it still pretty much is. You know, we have to remember it was only established in 2011. Um, but what I felt at that time was that we were at a very important point for us because, because like you say, this is a blank template. Um, our league still has time to mold itself into what it wants to be. You talk about being, you know, visibility of the league, it's increased so much, even in the last year. I have to say, LOI TV has provided a streaming service that I didn't think was going to come for even a couple of years. So every single game is streamed live on LOI TV, free to watch. Um, it's been brilliant for us as players. It's been brilliant for any supporters of the league. But obviously the next step is that we need to see, can we become televised? As we as we all know, the FAI Irish Cup final is our showpiece piece. It's it's on the, at the end of every year in November. Um, and unfortunately, often a cup final is not the greatest match to watch. And we have incredible battles all throughout the season that maybe people don't get to see if they don't actually physically go on and watch the streaming service. So that's something that's going to change. I mean, does, that's going to change. It's it's already changing. It's just about time and patience. We want to see that now, but it's it's coming. Um, and that will really help us as we're trying to do what we're trying to do out West as well. But yes, it's, it's a, I mean, we saw Jamie Finn from Shelburne, who's standout midfielder in our league. Um, she's just signed for Birmingham as well. So you see those announcements and you say, oh, that's brilliant. Amazing, you know, amazing for Jamie. And she absolutely deserves it. Um, but you also feel the other side you think oh god we've lost a really bright talent in our league and we all have to work internally to try and maintain these players here because we would love our young girls to see their role models here in Ireland yeah. um, but that's up to us then to provide structures and the supports for them No it's, it's the, the age old conundrum for Irish football Ruth continued yes. success <laughs> congratulations on the gig and we wish you the very best of luck with it Thanks so much, guys, and we'll chat to you soon. That's Ruth Fahey there, the uh, Galway WFC CEO, officially this Wednesday.